video, we are going to proceed to understand how people are employed and their terms and working conditions. Let's take the example of Kanta. Kanta works in an office. Her working hours are 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. She gets salary regularly at the end of the month. She has paid holidays on Sunday and other holidays as declared by the government. She gets medical and other allowances. She was given an appointment letter stating all the terms and conditions of work. On the other hand, we will go into the example of Kamal who is a daily wage earner. Kamal is a daily wage earner working in a grocery shop. He goes to the shop at 7.30 a.m. and works till 8 p.m. He has no paid holidays, not even on Sunday. He has no job security. He can be asked to leave any time by the employer. So, he is not secure in his job. From the examples we have seen that we can classify workers into two categories. One is organized sector and other is unorganized sector. Features of workers working in the organized sector are fixed working hours, regular salary at the end of the month, Workers are protected by various laws such as Factory Act, Minimum Wages Act, Paid Holidays, Provident Fund, etc., Job Security, Appointment Letter issued at the time of joining. Now look at the features of unorganized sector. No fixed hours or time. No regular salary. Workers have no legal protection, no paid holidays, provident fund, etc. There is no job security. Workers in the organized sector are offered many benefits and high wages. So, naturally, people would like to work in the organized sector. But, jobs are few in the organized sector and are usually offered to people who are highly qualified and skilled workers. Rest of the workers are forced to accept jobs in the unorganized sector. There are many reasons for this. Their jobs are few and workers are many. Another reason perhaps is that in 1990, because of this financial crunch in the country, many people lost job in the organized sector and were forced to accept job in the unorganized sector at low wages. Now, let us see the people in the rural area who work as unorganized workers. In the rural area, mostly landless agricultural laborers, small and marginal farmers, weavers, blacksmith, carpenters, etc. In the urban area, workers of small scale industry, casual workers in construction, trade and transport, street vendors, headload workers, rack pickers. Social classes who work as unorganized workers are scheduled caste, scheduled tribe and backward classes. The social classes also suffer from poverty and discrimination. Workers in the unorganized sector need protection against exploitation. They are paid low wages. No protection is provided to them. This results in injuries and even death at the time of accident. 
no medical facilities are provided to them this affects their health and even their work efficiency government can take some steps to protect these workers of the unorganized sector small farmers should be supported in getting agricultural inputs storage facilities and marketing outlets in the urban area government must help small scale industry in procuring raw material and marketing of finished goods minimum wage act must be implemented strictly steps should be taken to ensure regulation of working hours and medical facilities to the workers strict action should be taken against those who indulge in discrimination we also classify sectors on the basis of ownership of assets and delivery of services on this basis we classify sectors as public sector and private sector in the public sector government owns most of the assets and provides all the services for example railways post offices etc public sector with its huge infrastructure and resources takes up developmental projects for the welfare of the people the main motive of public sector is to provide welfare programs in the private sector ownership of assets is in the hands of private individuals and companies for example tata iron and steel limited reliance industries limited private sector's main motive is to earn profit public sector plays a very important role in the development and welfare of the people modern democracies are welfare states they invest a huge sum of money on the welfare programs and projects for the welfare of the people for example they take up developmental projects like railways construction of roads uh, harbors bridges provision of electricity etc public sector also supports some important units by giving subsidy to them providing health education at affordable cost is an important duty of the government safe drinking water housing facilities for the poor is also the responsibility of the public sector and thus it paves the way for development of the country now some of the questions of the topic one primary secondary and tertiary sectors are dependent on each other explain next explain why tertiary sector is gaining more importance in the economy next explain the term gdp why are only final goods and services counted while calculating gdp next how are workers exploited in the unorganized sector next differentiate between sectors on the basis of ownership with examples next explain the objectives of narega 2005 next how far is it correct to say that several services that cannot be provided by private sector can be provided by public sector explain thank you for watching the video if you like the video please 
share and subscribe to my channel.